One of the things that I saw is a gap in the marketplace in 2013. And that gap was, there's, in college, they're just not teaching people to write code. They teach them a lot of the computer science fundamentals, but they don't have the hard skill sets that we need when we're trying to hire people. And so what I try to do is build a, a learning model where people can learn how to code in a quick fashion. A lot of people, what they're doing now is they're trying to come into the marketplace and they're saying, I want to learn how to code. I really want to take advantage of this great ability, but I don't want to go to school for another four to five years to try to retrain myself. There's another way that I can get in the marketplace, and that's why we launched Immersion Training. Um, we just believe that is the quickest way to get someone highly skilled to make them employable. And that's kind of why I started it. And so we started a boot camp to be able to fulfill the needs that we have and also filled a major gap in the tech space where there's just not enough developers to do these jobs. So one of the things that we do at Coder Foundry is we, we use immersive training. And immersive training is when they come full time, nine hours a day. So all the coffee you can drink <laughs> uh, to help you in your learning process, you need lots of coffee because you're going to be here eight to nine hours a day. But we're super excited about the, uh, the New York location. We also teach them to not answer the question in, in a purely academic fashion, but purely relate that question back to your code. And so if I ask you what an abstract class, uh, class is, don't tell me exactly what that is from an academic perspective. Tell me how you used one, how you used it to solve the particular problem that you're um, in your code. And that allows them to very, be a very strong interviewer. Because one of the things that we believe is that if you can, you can talk about things, but if you can show somebody something, how you know how to do something, and you can show them a working project, and then you can also talk about it at a detail level, um, they're very hireable. And that's, that's what most people have a problem with breaking an industry is they don't have a portfolio, and even if they did have one, they don't really know how to explain how they built it or how they got there. And that's what we teach them to do. So one of the things that um, every student gets coming out of Coder Foundry is they'll have a, a rock solid portfolio that is professional, um, that has world class business focused projects so that um, when they meet employers, they can point them to this project that solves a particular problem. And one of the things that we use is a, like a, a, an issue tracking system or we call it a bug tracker. And that, uh, that, that problem has been solved in every, every industry that has coders. So they have a bug tracker. And so when you sit down in front of that employer, you can look at him in the eye and, and you, go, you guys have common language. And you can say, hey, I built a bug tracker. And the, and the employer automatically knows what that is. And what's the funny thing about um, books is that everybody wants a book when they start out and they realize right away that um, Google is entirely your friend and most of the things that we teach are, are brand new anyway and so a lot of things that you just need to look at. So it's like Stack Overflow and Google to look for answers and you spend a lot more time in the ID itself than trying to read a book. So at, um, at Coder Foundry, um, your primary skill set that you're going to be in is um, you're going to be in Microsoft Visual Studio which is probably the, uh, the greatest ID in the world. And so there's a lot of these companies out there that are um, building like in inventory control systems or they're building some type of um, system inside to run their business that, that needs something very custom. Um, but we've placed people with large corporations like Microsoft, Bank of America, uh, a lot of banking that goes on and so a lot of fintech. And then there's a lot of these small firms that you haven't heard of that just need people to come in, write some code for them, build their products that's out so they can compete there in the marketplace.